This is an experiment to test the upgrade facility of Microsoft Windows operating systems. For this experiment, every major version of the operating system was installed in order using a virtual machine. It is hoped that this will shed light on how the Windows upgrade process has changed over the years. VMware was chosen as the virtual machine due to its excellent video recording, snapshots and legacy Windows support compared to the alternatives. First, MS-DOS 5 was installed, as early versions of Windows required it. Installation was surprisingly easy for an operating system of this age. It even partitioned and formatted the hard drive. Note the grey on blue colour scheme with a status bar at the bottom. This set a trend that continues to this day. MS-DOS 5.0 by default booted to a simple file manager called DOS Shell. This is similar to Windows 1.0 and 2.0 in many ways, and supported mouse control, but was not capable of multitasking and cannot really be considered a relative of Windows. Before Windows installation began, some MS-DOS applications were installed, namely Monkey Island and Doom 2. These were very popular games at the time, and will test Windows' ability to cooperate with older programs. Once Monkey Island was verified working and a suitable number of imps had been dispatched, the Windows installation program was launched. The installation for Windows 1.0 isn't quite as pretty as MS-DOS 5 as it is a few years older, but it is by no means difficult to use. No pointing device was selected, as only serial mice are supported and VMware doesn't emulate one. Windows also predates VGA, so EGA graphics were selected. Notice the ASCII art rendering of a floppy drive. Once installed, it started up perfectly and the applications all worked. There aren't really any settings to modify other than win.ini, so after playing with Windows Write for a while and reminiscing about Steve Ballmer, it was on to Windows 2.0. Windows 2.0 asks a few extra questions, but apart from that, the installation looks very similar. Since it supports PS2 mice, that option was selected. The upgrade procedure doesn't make any attempt to keep any settings, and merely keeps a backup of win.ini so that settings can be ported across manually. On first glance, Windows 2.0 looks like 1.0 with a more conservative colour scheme. Windows Write has a few extra features, and there is a control panel to modify the settings in win.ini and install fonts and printers. From this control panel, a distinctive colour scheme was selected, a pink desktop background, red window title bar, and yellow menu bar. Finally, Doom 2 and Monkey Island were tested for their ability to launch from Windows. Both games launched with no problems. The Windows 3.0 installation procedure is clearly based on earlier versions, but has adopted the blue and grey colour scheme mentioned earlier. Once the basic setup files have been copied, it launches into a Windows environment to do the actual installing, which encouragingly has the same red title bar scheme as set in Windows 2.0. It does a search for applications already on the hard drive, but does not find any of the DOS applications. Once booted, Windows 3.0 still has the background, title bar and menu colours set. Program Manager has the same blue workspace as Windows 2.0, but this was a default setting. Since this is the first appearance of Program Manager, a program group was created for the DOS games and program items were created to point to them. Windows 3.1 is the first version of Windows to keep the keyboard and display settings from the previous version during setup. It's also the first version to ask for a user's name and company, and the application search process adds QBASIC, CVT Paint and the MS-DOS editor to the Program Manager. Once started, all settings appear to be the same, and the program groups created in Windows 3.0 are still present. Once the MS CDEX CD drivers had been installed, the Windows 95 CD was launched from Windows 3.1 and took about 30 minutes from start to finish. The setup procedure was very well polished compared to previous versions, and clearly intended for novices to be able to perform. Once booted, Windows 95 still had the same pink background and red title bars, but the menu bars had reverted to the default grey. This is likely due to right-click menus being introduced in Windows 95, which share the colour setting with the menu bars. 
The previous program manager groups had been turned into start menu folders, and Doom 2 and Monkey Island still worked. Interestingly, DOS Shell also still worked, and it wasn't even included with Windows 95. An upgrade version of Windows 98 could not be obtained, so the standard version was installed by renaming key system files and starting the install procedure from DOS. This still performs the upgrade process and keeps all settings in start menu groups, but does not provide a way to uninstall Windows 98 as no system files are backed up. The setup process took over an hour and a half, which is far longer than any previous version. Once booted, the colour settings and program groups were present and correct. All previous DOS programs still work, including QBasic. The installation procedure for Windows 98 SE took almost as long as Vanilla 98, but could be launched from Windows as a 98 SE upgrade CD was available. Nothing of note changed between versions, and all of the expected settings and programs were still present. The next version of Windows to be released after 98 was Windows 2000, which signified a change in focus for Microsoft towards NT-based operating systems. There was no upgrade version of 2000, but the standard version has no problems running straight from Windows 98. After the lengthy Windows 98 installation process, the Windows 2000 installation seemed very quick, approximately 45 minutes from start to finish. On first boot, an account is automatically set up for the previous user of Windows 98 with all the previous settings. Impressively, all the colours set way back in Windows 2.0 were still present after 13 years, and for the first time the desktop background was displayed without dithering as the Windows 2000 increases the display bit depth by default. Furthermore, the program groups added in Windows 3.0 were still present in the start menu. Doom 2 hung during startup, however, probably due to Windows 2000's poor DOS support. XP Service Pack 3 would not install without errors, so a Service Pack 2 CD was obtained that worked correctly. The install procedure was relatively painless, but took almost as long as Windows 98, clocking in at around 1 hour 10 minutes, and bears a surprising resemblance to the Windows 98 installer. Disappointingly, XP booted up with the default Luna theme. The theme can of course be set to Windows Classic, but none of the colours were kept in the upgrade from Windows 2000. Applications fare much better, as all the programs created in Windows 3.0 were still there in the start menu. Doom 2 also worked, as XP's DOS support was much improved from 2000s, and the other MS-DOS 5 applications like DOS Shell and QBasic were still present. Out of curiosity, a pink and red colour scheme was applied to Windows XP to see if it would stick through to Vista. Vista setup was launched straight from the DVD and proceeded without a hitch, taking around two hours, the longest yet. As before, the program manager groups were kept, but the colour scheme was not, so a similar pink and red scheme was again applied. Finally, we come to Microsoft's latest and greatest operating system. Despite the installation process being identical, the colour scheme was still not kept, but as expected, the program groups were still there and working. Since this was the last version of Windows to be installed in our experiment, the hard drive was explored to see what remnants remained of early Windows versions. There were still several legacy Windows applications in the Accessories folder, such as Card File and Calendar. Examining the Windows folder revealed even more legacy applications like Recorder, Terminal and, can you believe it, Reversi. Even the hard drive volume label was still MS-DOS 5. In conclusion, it is indeed possible to upgrade through every major version of Windows from 1.0 right through to XP and have some settings remain. Of particular note are the program manager icons created in Windows 3.0, which are still present and functional in Windows 7. This is nearly 20 years worth of application compatibility and Microsoft should be applauded for their efforts in this regard. However, it is a great shame that Windows XP, Vista and 7 do not import the colour scheme settings from Windows 2000, as that would mean a setting propagated from Windows 2.0 would have survived to the present day, which is 23 years of compatibility. Thank you very much for watching this video. All comments and suggestions are appreciated.